in oscillations, we usually see this oscillating wavy graph and we say, huh, I bet the displacement can be represented with this equation with respect to time. Xt could be, maybe I could say it's the amplitude times sine omega t. Or in different cases, I could say maybe the amplitude is, I mean not amplitude, the displacement is a cosine omega t and both will work because when we look at this pattern, we recognize it as a sinusoidal trigo function. But the question is, why do we choose those functions? Are there any math behind it that support our observations that we see in lab? Okay, so in labs, we see it oscillate. Math? Hmm. Let's see. That is the goal of today's videos. How do we get sine and cosine? What's the back, back end math? And a quick note to you, you need to know how to differentiate. So if you take maths at some point in uh, Form 5 IG or in A-levels, that's good enough for you to know. But this is actually a topic that you will learn in uh, further maths. So don't worry if you don't take further maths, you can join the show. It's a pretty intuitive one that you can learn as well. All right, let's begin. Now let's say we have a spring at equilibrium position, which is what I am drawing now, and I pull the string. And now it is displaced at a certain displacement away from equilibrium. Let's call this displacement X. But you see, in simple harmonic motion, there will always be a force trying to restore that spring back to its original position. So we call that a restoring force. Or in other words, we say there is a F equals a kx storing force. Uh, we call this F of spring. That usually we say is kx. All right. And notice how this x and the force is in a different direction. So oftentimes we don't write this, but actually it's a negative sign that you show that, oh, hey, it's in the opposite direction of your displacement. But anyway, we'll keep that there. So because of this restoring force, we will have an acceleration towards the equilibrium position. And this is what we looked at in the theory video, where acceleration and displacement x is in the opposite direction. So to stick to our convention, we probably want to give it some positive negative sign. For ease, we're going to choose acceleration to be positive because it's moving to the left, which means displacement to the right is going to be negative. Okay, so far? All right, so from also the, the previous video, um, this, this spring is going to oscillate at a certain frequency, right? So that is going to be omega. We're not going to derive this here. If you're curious to know where this came from, go check out the very first video in the oscillation playlist, which will derive the angular frequency of a spring, k over m, omega squared. Maybe this might be useful later. We will see how. Okay, so we got a basic setup. Now, for all kinds of physics, whenever there's forces and things involved, we start with Newton's second law. And that's going to be right here. So let's start with Newton's second law, our good old friend. F net equals to m times a. What are the forces acting on this mass? Just one though. Just this restoring force kx right here. So let's write the kx. So that will be just kx equals to ma. But wait, 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 wait. Acceleration is negative times x, right? So we got to add a negative sign here. Right? And actually, this equation is where we can use to derive what is omega square by recognizing the pattern of simple harmonic motion, which is a equals to negative omega square x. That's a general pattern. This one, uh, that one we got to know for our A-levels. So anyway, we continue on. So the goal, remember, is to find out an equation for x. How on earth do you get x equals A sine or A cos? Okay, let's continue on. Uh, maybe we can try make everything in terms of time first. What do I mean by that? You see, acceleration can be called uh, the rate of change of velocity. And the rate of change of velocity is really the second derivative of displacement. So I'm going to write here d square x dt square. Ooh. If you forgot where that came from, just a quick reminder, this is displacement. When you differentiate it, you get velocity, which is also known as dx dt. And you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration, which is the double derivative of displacement. So anyway, that's a quick reminder. We'll wrap that off. We see that in a previous video. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation to put everything on one side. So I have m times d square x dt square plus kx equals to zero. We'll see what we'll do this in a bit. And maybe I might uh, clear off the variable m. So I divide every term by m. That will give me d square x dt square plus k over m times x equals to zero. Hey, hang on a second. k over m. That's our omega square. So I'm going to change this and write omega square. Just to simplify a little bit. Okay, we are now at crossroads. We are stuck. This is what we call a second order differential equation. Because you see the square? It's not exactly square. It's really meaning second order. You differentiate the x two times. You get this. How do we solve this? We cannot just integrate. We cannot just... Hmm, how do we proceed? It's called ODE, second order. Now here's where we have to do a guessing game. What do I mean by a guessing game? So we have to work backwards. If I say, hmm, respect the time, right? What if I just say, okay, let's say x equals to t cubed. If I differentiate this, dx dt, I will get 3t squared. I differentiate again, one more time, d squared x, dt squared. I would get 6t. What if I try plugging all this into my second order differential equation? Would I get zero? If I do get zero, that means I have satisfied this equation. And I have made a correct guess that x is indeed t, t cubed. But we'll try that and see. So let's plug it in just to do a quick test. d square x dt square will be 6t. Plug it in. Plus omega square times x, which is t cubed, equals zero. Now, does this make sense? It seems a bit weird. 6t plus omega squared t cubed equals to 0. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Sure, it's true if t equals to 0, but other times, eh, not exactly. These are all different powers. Power of 1, power of 3. I cannot just say that they will cancel out somehow and become 0. So, no. I don't think it's a good guess. We have to try another guess. I'm going to rub off all these things. We need a smart guess. Maybe instead of blindly just trying some random function to plug in and see if it goes zero, let's think about it. If you want something where the second order differential can cancel out with the first order, which is just x, and become zero, they have to be the same function. There are not many functions which stay the same after you differentiate it twice. If you are thinking like, I don't miss, I don't remember, here's one that I can try. Remember we said sine and cosine? Maybe we should try them. So if I have a function of x equals to... Ooh, let me use, let's use a light blue to show our guesses. Maybe we say, all right, x equals to... Let's say a sine omega t. That means the second order differential equation, dx dt... First order will be omega a cos omega t. Hmm, it has become some other function, it's become cos. But we differentiate that again one more time, we will get second order, dx, d square x dt square, omega square a sine omega t. And don't forget, there's a negative sign right there. So I make a guess for sine, I get that. Let's try plugging it in. Testing, testing, see whether it can or not. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to move this up here a little bit, so we have more space. Okay, uh, all right, let's, oh, this is exciting. What if we do get it? Okay, let's plug it in to test. So d square x dt square will be negative omega square a sine omega t. So far, so good. Plus omega square. Let's plug in the x, which is just on the top right, if you see that. A sine omega t. Oh, what do we get if we have this? Negative omega square a sine omega t plus omega square a sine Hey, they're exactly the same function. And they cancel out. This equals to zero. So we make a correct guess. If you guess a sine function, it actually satisfies this second order differential equation equal to zero. Beautiful. I like it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What if we start with cosine? Would it apply as well? So the first guess looks like it works is this one. 
Second possible guess. What if we tried is cosine? Would that work too? I don't know. Let's try. A cos omega t. Hmm. All right, let's see if it works. So if we differentiate this one time. Dx dt equals to omega a uh, sine omega t. Differentiate cos, you get negative sine. Differentiate it again. So second order, d square x dt square. This will give us negative omega square a cosine omega t. Hmm, let's try plug it in and see what we get over here. Chan error, guys. It's our only way. So plug this in. You have negative omega square a cos omega t. That's this. Plus omega square times the guess x. So a cos omega t. Well, 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 what do we have here? Omega square a, omega square a, but one's negative, zero. So very nice. In all cases of t, both of the terms cancel out and they satisfy the second order differential equation. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, all right. I am. Mm. So hence, if you made a smart guess and you choose to guess either with sine or with a cosine, any of these guesses will satisfy our second order differential equation, which came from Newton's second law. So hence, I can conclude now from our smart guesses. Both sine and cos can satisfy this second order differential equation. It's a really long sentence, so I just write second ODE. And that's the first conclusion. So this is what we call general solution. So the general solution can be either one of them, really. General solution can be both. Either depending on what we call initial conditions all right so what does that what, what do we mean by initial conditions i'm kind of blocking my head here so initial conditions here can mean if i if i have a spring there's two ways i can get it to oscillate if my oscillation starts from what we call the origin then i could draw a graph and say if this is uh, displacement with respect to time then at time zero I start from the middle and I go up and I go down and I go up and I go down and this is our a sine omega uh, a sine omega t function so I say okay if I start from origin displacement is a sine omega t this is if you start oscillating from the origin at time t zero but what if your oscillation starts from a displaced position not origin anymore then your graph will look a little bit different because now you have to pull down the spring first maybe you pull it down to or pull it up or whichever one let's say we push it up push it up at your some starting oscillation position displace it and then you let go so then it will start to oscillate wow wow and so on and so forth and this is what we call a cosine graph if you start from non-zero at time t zero so this will be x equals to a cosine my head's kind of blocking it. Let's move this over. There we go. K cosine omega t. And that is a difference in the initial conditions. So to summarize, where did we get all this thing from? From Newton's second law, we set up an equation for force. We get this second order if differential equation. We are stuck. So we make some smart guesses and work backwards to see what kind of functions can satisfy this second order differential equation. And then... We look at the initial conditions and see how will we, what, what, in what cases should we use each of these? Okay, whether you start from origin or you start from some displaced position at time t0. Okay, so hope that was insightful in helping you to think about why are we using sine and cosine. And if you do take further maths, you will see this skill pretty helpful in a later chapter somewhere in FP2. So that's all for this video. Hope this further physics was interesting. I'll see you in the next one.